A rare freezing rain event on this weather warm day forcing closures, shutting down transit and leaving holiday travelers in a lurch. We have team coverage with crews fanned out all across western Washington, checking the road conditions and monitoring the travel challenges at SeaTac Airport. Let's start our coverage now on the east side with Kummel's Theron Zahn. He's been on the roads in the traffic tracker all morning long. Theron. Uh, yeah, I can tell you very much still icy out there. We're in the Jeez. Bellevue area and take a look here as we head uh, sort of southbound here over toward uh, Northeast uh, 20th Street. It has been just a tough go of it this morning. Uh, we certainly have to slow down ahead of time for these lights uh, because if you were to jam on the brakes, you would probably slide right through them. It's been a dicey uh, situation just trying to walk to your car, much less drive. Take a look at this video. Before dawn, there was a thick layer of ice out there this morning as we were out in the traffic tracker chained up on this weather worn it took chains for us to be able to get out and take these pictures. Uh, we saw cars that were abandoned in places. Uh, sometimes a car was uh, just stuck there with a driver inside trying to figure out what to do once they left the driveway, thinking it was just sort of a rainy morning, and it turned out to be a layer of ice. And now thanks to some hardworking road crews, some drivers this morning tell us they're seeing some improvement. What is it like driving around this morning? Well, I, I think we're just pressed. It's just starting to switch over to uh, starting to melt a little bit. It was really icy initially, and I think it's getting a little bit better. But of course, any routes off of the main roads are still glazed over with ice. Uh, anytime we would stop the traffic tracker and have to get out for some reason, uh, you'd slip right out, almost out uh, from under you when it came to your feet. So you still want to be very careful out there this morning uh, because we're going to find this layer of ice at 31 degrees. It is not melting that much other than the areas where they put down some de-icers. You can see in these live pictures on this weather-worn day here as we cross Bell Red Road here in the Bellevue area. So the bottom line, we've been telling you all morning long, best to stay home. That advice is still true. Even though more drivers are getting out now, I'll tell you, unless you have chains on your vehicle, maybe studded tires, it's best to stay home. All right, well, check out this scary video. This was sent to us uh, from Kathy Shaw in Seattle's Magnolia neighborhood. A car sliding backwards down that icy hill. Then suddenly the driver jumps out of the vehicle. That driver then crashes and tries to chase after that car, struggling to keep on their feet on the icy street. Such a dangerous situation right there. As you see, it just slammed right into that other car there. Uh, let's get over to Cumbo's Hannah Knowles. She's in downtown Seattle right there, not too far from the Magnolia area. And you've been out here since about 3 a.m. this morning, Hannah. What are you seeing? We're live from the bottom of the Queen Anne Hill. You can see they've now put some road closure signs there at the bottom to try and stop cars from going up and down. But that hasn't stopped people from trying to overcome that hill that we know so well causes problems anytime the weather hits. And as of now, no snow plows have made their way through the city. Main roads, not much better. These back and side roads, treacherous for drivers. From South Lake Union to Queen Anne, cars and people spent all morning long sliding and slipping. Frozen sidewalks, people trying to scrape ice off their cars. Michelle Terry tells me she's lived in Queen Anne for more than 30 years and has never seen an ice storm like this. Um, not in Seattle, exactly. I mean, I've seen snow, I've seen ice. I haven't seen it quite this combination before. Public transportation also delayed in the city. What usually is a busy morning for people trying to either get to work or maybe even start those holiday celebrations has turned into an icy, quiet day here in the city of Seattle. As you mentioned, we've been here since about 3 o'clock this morning watching people try to uh, take on these icy sidewalks. You can see someone off there in the distance, I think, trying to cross the roadway. That's been me and my photographer all morning long. So if you are heading out to maybe try and get some groceries or scrape ice off your car, just be very careful if you have yak tracks or some kind of spikes to put on the bottom of your shoe. I would highly suggest that. Back to you. Absolutely. Be safe, everyone. Let's get over to SeaTac Airport right now. Hundreds of flights canceled after the airport was forced to close runways because of freezing rain. Port of Seattle officials telling us this morning this is unprecedented. Let's get back out to uh, Como's Jeremy Harris now, who is at the airport with this major disruption for holiday travelers. Jeremy. 
Yeah, and right now, Alaska Airlines is playing an announcement over here at the airport in their part of the terminal, asking people that if they are from the Seattle area to return to their homes in anticipation of them not being able to get on a flight today. We know there have been at least 230 flight cancellations here at SeaTac Airport this morning. Alaska Airlines made the decision a few hours ago they were going to cancel every flight until at least noon. That's when they're going to reassess. The runways were closed earlier this morning due to heavy ice. Those crews were able to get one of those runways open, but I've been monitoring the uh, flight radar here, and it doesn't look like they've had any, if, if, if they have, it have been very few, if any, commercial flights departing from SeaTac. Now, we're talking about tens of thousands of passengers that are going to be impacted by this. And uh, here in the terminal today, it's folks are just kind of hunkering down, waiting out, trying to get their flights rescheduled, hoping that they can get on a later flight today if those flights start taking off. But again, here in Alaska Airlines, they've said that they are canceled through at least noon. Hopefully, if that rain takes over this afternoon and the temperatures come up a little bit, they'll be able to get everything uh, de-iced. We did stop and saw some of the planes that were out at the gates today, and you could actually see the icicles formed on their wings. So it's understandable why there's been a major disruption here to the airport system at SeaTac. We will be here on the ground for the next several hours, and we will keep you posted as anything changes. For now, back to you. Yeah, and it could take multiple days to get all those passengers rebooked, though we know Christmas mm -hmm. is just two days away, Kristen. Uh, on this weather warm day, you know, we think that maybe the worst of the freezing rain is behind us itself, but it's hours still until we're warm enough for that sheet of ice to finally melt. Yes, the good news is the worst of the ice storm, Kelly, is behind us. The intensity of of this freezing rain has decreased and conditions are slowly warming up to transition any of that icy mix over to rain. That has already occurred up and down our coastal beaches, slowly encroaching in on parts of South Sound, but we still have very fine freezing drizzle in areas of Pierce, King County, especially east side locations of King County as you move toward the Cascade Passes just west of the summit at Snoqualmie freezing rain. Once you go east of the Cascade Crest, it's snow, including at Stevens Pass. Now for the northwest interior, just starting to change over to rain there in Port Angeles, but the cold spot here is across Whatcom County, and this could be the spot that we'll see lingering freezing rain and snow for a little bit longer into the afternoon. The pink shades indicating freezing rain, the blue is indicating snow there in Blaine currently. So looking at the hour by hour forecast, we really need the temperature at the surface to get above 32 degrees. That's above freezing. That will eventually happen this afternoon. So with that comes a change over to rain and a gradual improvement to road conditions. We see that on our future cast starting at one o'clock throughout this time and through at least three o'clock, much of the I-5 corridor will change over to all rain. There will be a few exceptions. East side King County through the Cascade Passes holding on to enough cold air in the valleys to keep freezing rain with us through this evening. That same across Pendleton and areas of the Columbia River Gorge into the Portland Metro, where very treacherous travel conditions will continue into Christmas Eve. But heading into the holiday weekend, a big warm up to 51 degrees on Christmas Day, mild into early next week. But that comes with its own problems. Looking at some holiday weekend headlines with the mild lowland rain returning, that will melt any lowland snow that we still have on the ground, increasing the threat of urban street flooding but also coastal flooding as some gusty south winds develop here the next few days. We have the king tides as well. Past travel will continue to be icy, and with the arrival of rain even in the mountains next week, we can expect some river level rises by then. All right, so let's get a check of our mountain passes right now. First, let's take you to Snoqualmie Pass. As you see there on the left-hand side of your screen, very difficult driving right now. You can tell just by looking at the road. Snow coming down hard at times. Chains are required on all vehicles except all-wheel drive. Gusty winds also impacting visibility right now. As we take you over to Stevens Pass, Chains are also required on all vehicles except all-wheel drive there. Snow coming down there as well. Right now, US-2 is closed. 32 miles west of the summit near Gold Bar. It has been for several hours. No ETA yet on one that will reopen. As we give you a live look right now at downtown Seattle on this very chilly and iced over morning, King County Metro announcing all bus services were suspended because of icy roads. They say they will give yet another update on those services 
at 2 p.m. today. Pierce Transit also delayed its bus routes. They say their buses could get moving later this morning or perhaps early afternoon. Washington State Ferry says the ice is restricting its travel schedules as well. This is a look at Coleman Dock right now. Seattle, Bainbridge, Edmonds Kingston, and Meckleteo Clinton are all operating on one boat schedule for right now. The Seattle Bremerton route resumed just about one hour ago. Port Townsend Coopville route resumed at 8 o'clock this morning, and the routes to Fauntleroy, Vashon, and Southworth are also back to two boat service. Washington State Ferry says travelers need to take extreme caution when they're trying to get to those terminals this morning. Just stay home if you can. All right, let's get a check of our power outages right now. Here are some of the latest numbers. Right now, Puget Sound Energy has more than 13,000 customers without power. Snohomish County PUD has nearly 5,600 customers out. Seattle City Light reports more than 500 customers are without power. All right, check out some of these photos. Uh, this is just outside the Space Needle from Como reporter Jeremy Harris. The sidewalks and most of the ground coated in ice.